Hello friend, my name is Asindra and today I'm going to continue playing for you Magical Diary with friend. Hi! Or rather friend's going to be playing it with me. Yeah! So last time was friend's first day at school. Yep, we bumped into a teacher, uh, <laughs> saw one of our new friends get get made horribly wet with a, a what was it, water balloon? Yeah. Yeah. And we saw an overly peppy teacher who's all yep. like, yay, exams! <laughs> She's so. also the headmistress, yay. so oh, that's gosh. a thing. So, yeah. um, would you like to pick your class schedule, friend? Um, I would like to do one of each of the types of magic. I don't mind what order. And just go across it then. Yep, that's fine. Like, I figure we should get a decent basis in magic at first. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. This is one of his classes. Get to your seats. Hurry up. No chatter. In this class, carelessness might cost you your fingers. He wouldn't really cut off students' fingers, would he? Here, you will be learning the seductive art of red magic. The ev 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 evocation and control of energy. With this power, you might summon a breeze, light a fire, or call a distant object to hand. I say that it is seductive, not because of the power itself, but because of simple minds preferring simple solutions. Blast your enemies with lightning, tear buildings apart with earthquakes, let the world around you burn. Fall victim to such vulgar fantasies, and you leave yourself vulnerable to those capable of creative thought. There are many approaches that direct force cannot defend against. He snaps his fingers in the air. One inattentive moment and you lose control of the forces you have summoned. After that, you will only be remembered as an unpleasant stain on the walls. He rubs his hands together and gives a nasty smile. Now for your lessons. Yay. Yay. Gain three red magic and, th and three stress. Yeah, if you get to, like, 50 stress, they start getting concerned about you, but it's pretty easy to get rid of stress. Oh, good. Just sleep. Yeah. <laughs> good, now we have flu magic. Uh, this is one of his classes, again. Mill about all you like. It's your own time you're wasting. I have no objections to failing the lot of you at the next exam. A flurry of robes as students scramble for seats. Here, you will be learning the subtle art of blue magic. At least some of you will. I thoroughly expect this subject to go over some of your heads. Blue is the color of change, that is, altering what is already there, not creating, not destroying. It is commonly used in conjunction with other magical styles in order to perform alchemic transmutations and other alterations of essence. Blue magic can also be used to change the effects of an existing spell, to cast or dispel illusions, or to change locations without movement through intervening space. For a skilled blue magician, reality is fluid, for all things can be changed, yet few minds are capable of grasping the true range of possibilities. We'll see what you're worth. Gained two blue magic seal and two stress. Only two? Really? Yeah. You can also gain zero or negative, wow. I think. So, <laughs> actually, maybe just zero. I don't think negative, but you still gain stress regardless. I, still, which I is certainly fun. hope you don't get negative. That's so harsh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I arrived at the classroom, I find P Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Hello, little seedlings. Please take your seats. Today, you're going to learn about green magic, the magic of life. This is a very important skill for any witch or wizard to have, especially when you get to be a certain age. Your body is a garden to be cared for. With proper tending, it could last you for centuries. Slowly, carefully, you must encourage your subjects to grow in the direction you prefer. Be patient and the rose vines will lose their thorns and twine around you. One of the students makes a scoffing noise. If it can heal, it can kill. What happens if you force something to grow the wrong way quickly? Why would you want to do that? Because you don't like the life in front of you. Well, if that's your plan, I can look forward to working with you for a very long time. Life has its own flow. You can change it, but the harder you push, the more energy you'll need. To cause a great change in an instant takes immense power. So you'd better get started. 
gained one green magic and one stress. This is ongoing well, guys. <laughs> we'll get magic someday. Yeah. Like magic time. I arrive in the classroom feeling slightly apprehensive. Like magic? Will there be zombies? Good morning. Has everyone got a smock or an apron? There are plenty at the back. Aprons? What are we going to do with those? For those of you who are new to our magical traditions, I should reassure you that black magic has nothing to do with death or evil. There's no such thing as evil magic. There's only magic. The bad and the good come from how you choose to use it. Black is the color of weight, solidity, and permanence. Black magic is the magic of enchantment in physical form. All wands and things like that are created with black magic. This does mean that cursed items are enchanted with black magic as well. That might be how people got the wrong idea. A pale girl with dark hair raises her hand. Yes, Raven? Since you're enchanting matter and bones are matter, you could use black magic to animate a skeleton, right? That's an interesting question. You could certainly enchant a skeleton to hold a spell or react in some way. You could set a skull to chatter its jaw when anyone came near, like an alarm. But to make something that could walk around and act on its own, you'd need to bind a spirit to it, and that calls for another kind of magic. We will get to combine techniques later in the year. Now, one of the easiest ways to infuse magic into a physical substance is to mix things together in liquids, potions, and that's what we will be starting with. Always remember to wear a smock or apron. Potion stains could ruin your uniform. Success! Gain two black magic and two stress. I hope we, I really hope enough. we get three white. Yeah, so... please. Please can we get three. That'd be amazing. <laughs> okay, white magic time. When I arrive in the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Good morning, Starshines. You'll need to sit down before we can start, but take your time. Relax. Get comfortable. That's very important when working with this particular style of magic. Taking her at her word, I yawn and stretch before I settle into my seat. To some people, white is the absence of color, a blank canvas. In the non-magical world, white is a complete spectrum, all colors combined into one. In some ways, you could think of white magic as either of these things. White magic is the tool you use to accept the spir access the spiritual realm. <clears throat> Ghosts, dreams, creatures from other planes, the thoughts of those around you. With white magic, you can experience and communicate with things that are normally hidden. There is one thing that I need to warn you about. Some people have tried to use white magic to control minds and spirits, instead of asking for their aid. Don't do it. You will regret it. Now, shall we go on with the lesson? <clears throat> what sort of warning is that? Does she mean that it won't work? All that will be expelled or arrested or our brains will melt or what? That would be hilarious if your it brain wouldn't. melted. <laughs> just dripping out of your ear. Yeah. Uh, maybe she'll tell us more later. I just more likely to drip out of your nose. <gasps> we did it! Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. After dinner, I'm walking back to my room when I notice that the door is already open. I peek through the gap to see who's inside. It's Alan. She's folding up some clothing, probably putting her laundry away. Wait a minute. That's Virginia's dress that she's opening. Why is Alan running rummaging around in our roommate's stuff? I haven't made a sound, she doesn't know that I'm here yet. What are we gonna do? I think we should ask what she's doing, because it might be that like maybe Virginia was all like, hey, do my washing please. And she was all like, okay, and she's putting it away. <laughs> If you want to know something, why not just ask? What are you doing? Eek! Sorry, I didn't see you there. Just tidying up a little. Yes, but isn't that Virginia's stuff? Yes. Why are you tidying up her things? Because she doesn't do it herself. What, she's making you be her maid? No. At this point, Virginia returns to our shared room. Hey, you guys, what's up? Why are you making poor Ellen into your slave? Huh? She's not. 
Just what is going on here? I shake my head. Um, I think I'm obviously confused about something. She saw me putting away some of your clothes. Oh, it was you that's been doing that? I'm sorry, I just hate messy rooms. No, it's my fault. I'm not very good at picking up after myself. Mom always does it for me at home. Still, I didn't think it was too bad yet. We've only been here a week. I hate having things be out of place. It makes me feel nervous. I don't know if I can make things perfect all the time. We all have to live together for a year without driving each other crazy. How can we work this out? Hmm. I think Ellen should teach Virginia. Okay. Well, you said that you didn't know if you could keep things clean, but that's probably because you don't know how. If Ellen teaches you how to clean a room properly and gives you reminders, I'm sure you can do it. I suppose. Yeah, it's not a perfect compromise, but it's really hard to reach a perfect agreement between three different people. It's funny when you, uh, if you go talk to Virginia, she, you are like, Ellen's going through your panties or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, I missed out. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. I'm awakened early on Saturday morning by a tap at the door, followed by a faint hissing sound. What's going on? Is there Snakes. a creeper outside my door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a creeper. I stumble out of bed to find the three envelopes and pushed under the door to our room, each marked with one of our names. Hey, money's here. Each envelope. Ten dollars. <laughs> oh, sweet. Each envelope contains five dollars, the weekly spending allowance for Iris Academy students. It's our money. Why can't they give it to us all at once? I guess they don't trust us not to spend all of it at once, and then run out and complain. Well, that might teach people to plan ahead. This way still teaches people to plan ahead. If you want to buy anything really cool, you gotta save up. But you're missing the important part. It's Saturday, and that means a trip to the mall. I didn't think you were a shopaholic. I'm not. But it's great to get out and look at something other than school for a while, isn't it? Also, they have ice cream, and penny candy, and really big cinnamon cookies, and... We get the idea. Since I've been there before, I can show you guys around. What about studying? You have plenty of time for that during the week, right, Amethyst? Mm. I kind of want to go to the mall to, like, decrease our stress a bit, I guess. Uh, it depends on what you do, but yeah. yeah I guess. Oh, well, let's have a go for it. Sure, I'd love to go to the mall with you. Great. Ellen? I guess it's okay, but you ought to have a good breakfast before you look at ice cream. Yes, mother. Students are lining up outside the school, waiting for a free seat in one of the shuttle vans that travel between here and the local shopping centre. Come on, we can ride together. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? We're still in uniform. So? Won't people stare at us because we're all wearing capes? Nah. Just act natural. It's no big deal. But it's nowhere near Halloween. Since the teachers aren't saying a thing, I suppose this is what we're supposed to do? The mall isn't very large or very crowded. At least where I'm... S Ugh. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> Suddenly had to blow up there, sorry. At least where I'm standing, witches and wizards easily outnumber shoppers in ordinary clothes, but no one reach no one reacts to the sight. I guess if students come here all the time, they get used to it. Okay, that place does coffee and pastries, they have fresh fruit, that one does baked potatoes, there's a gift shop, there's the cafe. Are all these stores magical? No, there's only one magic shop here. They sell wands and stuff. I'm going to get a chocolate croissant. What about you? Mm. Okay, so uh, the magic store, if we go there, the, we can look at what they have for sale, but I don't think you can buy anything right now except for a wand. And mm. it's. Eh. And then the food court, you can de stress by buying food. And the window shopping, you de stress a little bit, but it, you don't actually spend any money. And then the games arcade, you can play like pinball and stuff to de stress as well. Uh, I think we should go window shopping, get a, get a decent idea of what's around here. 
Look at all the shops. Make you don't actually get to. It's just a dialogue. I know. I know. I, okay. I, I, I'm role playing here. I've got my head here. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get your head in the game. Yeah. But we're horses, not wildcats. Anyway. <laughs> I wander in and out of various stores. It's not a very big mall, but there are books, clothes, music, and toys, so I keep myself entertained for a few hours. Stress decreases by three. Yay! Nice. So, next time, we will see what else we get to do in this magical game. Um, hey. friend, do you have anything left to say? Tune in next week to find out what we do next week. Yes. So, thank you for watching. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.